Hi, I'm Cassie Kozarkov, and I'm going to very briefly unpack for you last week's LinkedIn opt-out scandal. So what happened? What happened was if you have a LinkedIn account and you're not in the EU or the UK, last week, LinkedIn quietly, sneakily without telling you, opted you into having all your content and your personal data be used for training it and its affiliates, content generation, generative AI systems. Sneaky, sneaky. Now, why should this rub you the wrong way? It's not that you were quietly opted into something. That's not the issue. You're quietly opted in and out of things on the internet all the time. And if you had to give permission for every little bit of line of code that runs online, you would probably barely be logged into your inbox by the time bedtime rolls around. The problem is the dark pattern. A dark design pattern is when sneaky user experience design techniques are used to trick you into doing things that you would not choose for yourself. And this is a dark design pattern because when people are told, hey, LinkedIn opted all your data into its content creation AI, well, people upon finding that out, they have been opting the hell out. Um, I had a poll on my LinkedIn, link in the description below, where you can see over 4,000 people said that if they had made their choice to be in or out, around 90% chose to be out. So LinkedIn gave you a default option that is very different from what most people would choose for themselves. And you can also follow their link to see some of the arguments of why people chose to stay in who did choose to stay in. Also, importantly, in the description below is a one-click opt-out link. So if you're feeling a little icky, you can go and opt out in one go. Uh, let's continue to unpack this. This is specifically about content. It's not about, hey, yet another company is training its AI systems on your data. In fact, if you look at the fine print, all the regular AI training stuff that you know and love from the last 10 years online, all of that stuff is excluded from this opt-out. So you might opt out by clicking that button now that you know about it, now that you've found the link in the description, you might click on that but you're still not opted out of the regular run of the mill uh, using your data to train AI systems that are supposed to optimize your user experience used for security and so on. So this is content specific. This is something special. So what's going on here and why are people so upset by it? Well, first, something that you need to know about generative AI systems is that they are a little bit different from regular AI in one important way when it comes to privacy. See, all those systems that your data has been feeding all along to optimize your user experience, the inputs that go into that, your data, look quite different from the outputs, which is the experience that uh, you are then served online. Inputs are different from outputs. But with generative AI, the inputs that go in, your thoughts, ideas, personality, content, your posts, look a lot like what comes out on the other side auto-generated content. This is also true of uh, tools like Midjourney, where images go in and images come out. And whenever you have the data looking very similar on the in and the out, what you get is the possibility that you get leakage from that system on the other side. So why is this important? Why is it tricky? Because there's a whole hornet's nest of legal issues here. See, certain jurisdictions like California, Virginia, the EU, require your data to be deleted if you ask for that deletion or sometimes if your relationship with the provider ends as in you delete your account so you have to be able to delete your data and linkedin's own user agreement also says hey if you delete your posts we will honor that and delete your data but when data goes into a generative ai system it's like an elephant it never forgets that data could be leaked out on the other side. And because what goes in looks like what comes out, you could get something very similar coming out on the other side. And now people might say, well, what about this whole discipline of machine unlearning? Isn't that all about getting a generative AI system to forget what it learned? I'm gonna link for you a research review paper from this year, which has some troubling notes, which says, yeah, it's a trendy field. It's very interesting. However, unfortunately, a lot of unsolved problems and there is in fact no guarantee that your system will unlearn the data that you ask it to unlearn to make this more ironic if you keep the data 
and then you have a generative AI system that's trained on it and then it accidentally leaks something of yours. If you kept the data, if LinkedIn kept the data, then they could look at the data, compare it with what they're about to leak and be like, oh, oops, these are too similar, let's not leak it. But if they so kindly delete what you've asked them to delete, then they won't know that they're leaking it until you, upset as a content creator with your backups of your writing, your thoughts, ideas, personality somewhere else will be like, I can prove to you that this is mine. So this is a legal hornet's nest. It is not possible to guarantee the kind of deletion that is legally required. If you train generative AI systems on data where the inputs resemble the outputs so closely. So LinkedIn is essentially knowingly throwing its own terms of service and a whole bunch of privacy legislation out the window. Uh Oh, what would be worth that? Let's understand this a little better. Trying to remove a data point from a generative AI system that's been trained on that is like trying to remove sugar from a cake once that cake has been baked. If there's a problem, your best action, I guess, would be to trash the whole cake. And similarly, What LinkedIn would have to do if you wanted to remove content that had been trained on, you would have to delete everything that has happened since that data point came into the system and you would have to revert to there and start training from scratch. And that is a monstrous bill, (laughs) monstrous electricity bill. So totally unfeasible. In other words, once it's in there, practically speaking, it's in there. You can't do all that revert and retrain every time someone feels like spring cleaning their profile and deleting some posts. And yet the law does require for that stuff to be deleted and it is not deleted when it can be leaked out on the other side. When other types of data where the inputs don't resemble the outputs go into an AI system and then you delete the original because you can't recreate the original thing because the outputs look different from the inputs, you don't have that same legal problem, but here you do. So LinkedIn is uh, sticking its neck out quite a bit. What would make it worth it? Well, potentially to farm out your content to Microsoft and other affiliates to train their AI systems. And why would you do this? Why would you donate your data, which is valuable, particularly on LinkedIn? A lot of people pour heart and soul into their posts. They write beautifully, creatively. And the fact that it's a professional ish platform uh, keeps people from um, being disrespectful and thoughtless to the extent that that's possible. I would say, at least personally, I love LinkedIn. It's a great platform relative to others because it's just so civilized on there. So I love it and I would not want to see this beautiful place be destroyed. But at the same time, when we do put our best foot forward there, That's a valuable data set that could be trained from, but it's our valuable data that LinkedIn told us we own. What gives? And I'll also point out to all the folks who feel like donating their work to make the internet better uh, because they don't want AI to be based on just the drunk uncles out there. uh, Folks have that sentiment maybe closer on the drunk uncle spectrum than they themselves realize because the more valuable, the better your content, the more incentive you have not to have that be cloned unrestrictedly, not to give it away without any guarantee that some benefit's gonna come back to you. So those who believe that their content is better are more likely to smash that no button and opt out. I personally, as a top voice on LinkedIn, have opted out as well. The other possibility, and hey, these are not mutually exclusive, it could be both, is that LinkedIn is going all in on AI generated content creator relations be damned. And as a creator on there, as a LinkedIn top voice, this does break my heart a little bit. I mean, look, as a user, no, thank you. If I wanna go down a rabbit hole and have an AI generated conversation with myself, there are much better places to do it than LinkedIn. I could do it on, hey, ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini. There are plenty of places where I can go and read content by myself. I'm not on LinkedIn for that. I'm on LinkedIn for the people, for the community and for the actual human content. And as a creator, look, I understand the attention economy and I don't mind a little bit of a sporting competition as long as who I'm competing with for eyeballs are humans. It's a losing game if I have to start competing with the platform itself. So what is LinkedIn gonna be? Is it going to be a bunch of auto-generated content that uh, 
people just have little fights about in the comments. Is it going to become a new site and not a social media site anymore? Where are we going with this? Is it just going to be a place for content rabbit holes all automatically generated? And aren't you thinking about model collapse? Model collapse is what happens when you start out training AI systems on human generated content and get some pretty good results. And then you just indiscriminately keep ingesting more data from the internet, except that that content is now from AI generated systems who are spreading all their schlock around. And now a lot of your training data is in fact AI generated. And as more and more and more and more of that cycle happens, less and less and less of your data is the real stuff. And that will create abrupt and unpleasant performance results, model collapse, as we call it. It is the Ouroboros of training on yourself. And one way to think about this is uh, if you're, if you're not familiar with model collapse, what it's about is if I tell you that I have 10 photographs of cats, then that training data set is small. It's got 10 cats in it. There's, there's a limit to what you can learn, but there you go, 10 cats worth. Now, if I take, took those same 10 cats and I just copied those a billion times and I told you, hey, I have a data set full of 10 billion cats, 10 billion cats, real ones, but they're all different. That can teach you quite a lot if you're building a, a system that's supposed to classify a cat or a system that's supposed to generate cat-like images. But if it's just the same 10 over and over again, that is not the same thing. You do not actually have 10 billion cat data points at that point. And if instead you had the first 10 and then you took a sort of averaged version of them and you gave me 10 billion of those, that too is not the same thing as 10 actual human photographed cats. So that's what we mean by model collapse. You expect the kind of performance you're going to get with the model with 10 billion in it. But what instead happens is you get much worse performance than even the model that's only based on 10 because all the rest of it is treated as if it's informative. The math expects that to contribute something new, but there's no contribution going on there. So that's model collapse. And um, if you start over indexing on auto generated content, all the beauty that might have existed in the original data set, it all leaves. So LinkedIn, I don't know what we think we're doing here. If you thought that this was a good thing that people would agree to, should have asked or opted us out by default. I don't think that you asked people truly whether they prefer to be in or out. And then you made that the default setting because that would have been the way to do it. That's not a dark pattern. Sneakily pillaging people's content, not the way we build our future. LinkedIn, you're a fantastic platform. I love being on there. I love the community that I've built. People are great, fun, thoughtful. We learn a lot from one another. Let's keep that. It's a beautiful thing. It would be a shame if it rotted from inside. Again, I'm Cassie Kozarkov. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Again, the instant opt out link is in the description. And please go ahead and share this with whoever you think might not know that this is going on on LinkedIn and might not want to have all their content, their posts, their personality, their sparkle going into the more of a system that's just going to churn out content that they don't want to be part of. So please share that link, like, share, subscribe here, and I'll catch you next time.